morning, everyone. We got our first big snow yesterday. I think we got it somewhere around five inches and it's the next day now and it just looks glorious out here. I'm gonna run and check on the bees. I wanted to give you guys a little update on how they're doing. So it occurred to me last night when I was laying in bed that since we got so much snow, that that may be affecting the bees and their entrance way, and it was. So I ran out here early this morning and they had several inches where their entrance is. So I went ahead and removed it and they should be able to come in and out. I don't think they're doing much of that right now, but I don't want their only entrance blocked. Behind me, we have just two hives. We had three and one of the hives swarmed in the summer and that hive was just too small going into winter. So we did go ahead and combine them with this hive on the end. The one in the middle is the strongest. I'm hoping they're both gonna overwinter. This is my first year with bees, so we'll see how things go. I'm happy they now have that snow on top, so that's gonna provide a little extra insulation for them. One other thing Eric and I did was add some pallets and some wood on the back, just as a little bit of a wind barrier. We don't want them to get too much of that cold air under the hives because they are raised up on those pallets. And my goal for the winter is to keep this area, you know, semi snow free, just so we don't get too much buildup around this over the winter. Okay, now that the sun is starting to come up, I'm gonna head back and see what Eric's up to. Got the deck all cleaned off, so I'm gonna get the panels cleaned off because the sun's starting to come up. chickens don't really know what to make of the snow. Yesterday they were outside, but today they are less reluctant to go outside. Come on guys. We got two eggs. We're gonna pull them because they will freeze if we leave them out here too long. So we already came out here earlier this morning and their water's frozen up again. And we have some dry food in here, but we're gonna go feed them their daily wet food outside. Come on boys. Get out of the chicken food. This is their fermented grains that we mix up for them and it is pretty warm so it doesn't always freeze but we are going to have to switch over to just dry grain this winter because it will eventually freeze when we get down to those really cold temps. So with the chickens water being frozen we're going to head back inside. I got a big pot of water on the wood stove and we're going to fill them back up. We're gonna make use of this nice, clean, fresh snow and get some more hot water on the stove. The snow machine's been sitting for a while. We're gonna see if we can get her fired up. As soon as we get her fired up, I'm gonna take this thing for a ride. I think we got enough snow, it shouldn't be an issue. Kill switch is on? No. We're troubleshooting the snow machine. It fired right up when I first went to start it, and for some reason the primer, there's usually some pressure in it when I'm pumping it. There's no pressure in it right now. It says there's some gas in there, but that gauge might be a little off. So I'm gonna top it off with some gas, and hopefully that's the issue. Oh, 
Okay, so the primers, I can feel pressure in the primer now. So I think, I think with the angle we have the snow machine at, it just wasn't uh, enough gas in the tank. So let's see if that worked. kind of jealous Eric got to take it out first. Super fun. It's not a crazy fast new snow machine by any means, but they're still really fun toys to us. So we enjoy it. Did pretty good. Uh, ran really good once we put gas in it. The mystery was solved. And as part as our, I guess, daily routine, we always try to get out of the house, especially when we start getting less sunlight. It's kind of hard being cooped up in the cabin all day. So we are gonna take the dogs out on their daily walk. One thing that we get a lot of questions on is our pets. So we have two dogs and two cats. Bo and Bandit are our dogs. Bo is black and white and he is a mixture of breeds. Bandit is a pure Catahoula and he's the speckled one. Come on. They are both the same age, believe it or not, but they don't quite act like it. Bo's a little slower. He's not arthritic or anything. We just like to help him around a lot. And even though they're super, you know, dogs that get outdoors, we kind of baby them. They have tempur beds and things like that. <laughs> yeah, both the dogs are 10 years old. We've had Bannett since he was eight weeks old and we got Bo. Uh, we adopted him when he was about a year old. So we've had him pretty much his whole life also. They're a little under 10, right? Nine and a half? Yeah. And then, yeah, we've got we've got our two cats. We've got Hunter, who's he's about 10 years old. We've had him since he was, I think, eight weeks too. We've got Pepper, and we've had her for about two, two years. Two and a half. She's two and a half years old. Yeah. Two and a half. And they they're indoor outdoor cats. They've got a cat door that just stays open, so they come and go as they please. And um, yeah, they usually in the winter just sleep a lot. Another question we get is how have the animals transitioned to Alaska life compared to where we used to live? And for the most part, pretty well. The dogs could care less. They'll go anywhere we go and they just want adventure. The cats do sleep a little more and are not as fond of the snow, but they're learning to live with it, I'd say. We ended up getting snow earlier this year than we did last year, which is kind of cool because we got our snow machine this year, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait till there's more snow. We can actually start taking it out again. It's cold out here and we're hungry. We're heading back to the cabin to make some lunch. For lunch, we're having leftover rice and beans and some pork chops that Eric made. It's about halfway through the amount of sunlight we're gonna be getting today. I wanna to kinda of point out a few things that's going on with our solar system. So this morning, it actually started up pretty good. We had a lot of sun and that was able to juice the batteries up pretty good. But now the sun's kind of starting to go down and we're getting a lot of cloud coverage. So we're really not getting a lot of solar right now. We're sitting at about 12.4 volts, which is almost full. 12.6 would be full. And we're only getting anywhere from 13 to about 24 watts of solar right now, which isn't too good. When it starts getting really cold like this, what I like to do is try to get the batteries topped off when we're going into a really cold night. So what we're gonna end up doing today is we'll run the generator for maybe an hour before we go to bed and make sure the batteries are juiced up and there's no chance of them freezing. We thought it would be fun to show you guys our loft 
It's an area that we haven't really spoken much about since we moved here over a year ago, and there's been some recent improvements, so we thought we would take a moment to talk about it. Our loft is 160 square feet, and a little something about it that's unique is that we have a full-size loft, so you can see I'm standing, someone taller could stand, and then it tapers as it gets closer to the walls. Most of the space up here is occupied by our bed, which is a queen-size bed and the rest of it functions as a wardrobe area for us. So our closet and also our workspace. We have our computers and our gear up here and we bring that downstairs if we need to, but for most part, we are working upstairs. This area really works pretty well for Eric and I. We don't have issues with the space. Eric put in this really cool iron bar here and this works as a you know jacket, hanger, something you'd find in an actual closet. And the other way we store most of our clothes is just in cubbies. I have my own cubby, Eric has his own cubby, and we have some baskets that we put underneath all of this. The other thing that's really nice, when we got our mattress, we were talking about building something, but we did find someone giving away one of these box springs for free that he had built, and it has drawers, so it also functions for us as space. We both have little hangers or racks where we put some stuff and we brought a lot of that furniture with us from Oregon. On Eric's little makeshift palette here, we have a Air Yeti, which this is something that we use. We don't have to because we can plug things into our battery system, but this is something we got when we first moved here and we didn't have a solar system and it works really well if we're up here not by an outlet. This carries a charge and we can charge our laptop or our phones or any sort of other things on the go and we can also just charge them here on the nightstand as you clearly see. We're gonna head over to the other side of the bedroom. This is my layer and we've already arrived. This is where we have again our laptops. We both have one that we work off of. I have my little cubby space and I have this really awesome coat hanger that Eric made from I'm gonna call it driftwood, but it was back from the lake that we lived at. All in all, there's still improvements to be made, but we just recently made these improvements that you're seeing. We were living up here with just the bed and everything sprawled out on the floor for over a year. So it's pretty exciting to have a little bit of, you know, cubicles and places to actually work. And the back side of this loft, which is open, really works well for us for drying herbs and for drying clothes. This is our pulley system for drying clothes in the winter. We dry our clothes outside in the summer. Eric and I are pretty happy with this area up here. We have little lights that we strung up and we put those on in, at night and in the morning. We actually don't even use the brighter lights that you're seeing. We feel like it's our own little personal space away from the animals. We can get work done. The cats do come up here too, of course. We thought you guys might enjoy seeing it because this is a little bit of a unique situation. I know there are folks who live in apartments in smaller areas, but this is entirely where we sleep and get dressed and also do work. We do store some of these things in the connex on the off seasons, but for the most part, we have a lot of it in here because anything that we put outside is susceptible to freezing. This time of the year, the sun seems to come and go really fast. You can already tell that it's getting dark outside. That means it's probably closer to 4.30. We are going to head back out and get some stuff done. One thing I forgot to mention was about our geese. A while back, we had talked about no longer keeping them and we were fortunate enough to find a new home for them. So they were not eaten, they were saved from the menu and we rehomed them actually to a really wonderful home that we were very excited about. That was a few weeks back. So now we just have our 19 chickens. You may have noticed this really nifty light and this is a solar power light bulb and it can also be charged inside, which is what we've been doing and it is LED. We put this in the chicken coop early in the morning and the chickens will wake up in response to it and they do stay up a little bit later at night with it. We're just trying to increase their daytime mainly for feeding and eating, drinking water. You know, I'm not as concerned about getting eggs, but they are still laying at this point with the light we've been giving them. I scared her. Hey, come on. Come on, dude. Come on. Come on. 
So we need to start up the generator tonight for probably about an hour and get the batteries charged up for us. But before we did that, I wanted to show you guys our exhaust. And I showed this in a prior video, but I didn't show the little mount I made for it to keep it up out of the snow. So this is it. It just brings it up about two feet out of the shelter logic. And this is where our exhaust is coming out. Let's head in the shelter logic and get it started up. Thank <laughs> you. 